Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. I think I about dropped. Um, yeah, we are live. It is 1046 in the morning. So get your projects done. A little project mo morning motivation. Today we're going to talk about long tube headers. And we need to talk about this a lot, apparently. <clears throat> I get I get a lot of comments on this stuff on, on headers and shorty manifolds, shorty headers and, and stock exhaust manifolds and all of these things. I I even got a, a comment that I was reading through today about you know power at 600 RPM, and I'm like, that's the <laughs> that's the idle speed of your motor. <laughs> Please show me where you're at wide open throttle at 600 RPM. I would be very interested in knowing that, and also telling you why you shouldn't be at wide open throttle at 600 RPM ever. <laughs> that's not important. But I digress. The what I want to talk about today are actually are hemi headers because this is this was a fairly cool test and it and it showed that sometimes bigger really is better. So I ran a 5.7 hemi from a ram, a truck motor basically, a 5.7. It was a stock short block. I did add ring gap to it because later on we would try running boost on it. We had the stock heads with valve springs because we we had the camshaft upgrade that we'd put on it. We had the Magnum kegger intake, or the kegger, <laughs> sorry, 360. We had the um, truck intake manifold and throttle body. I did make the throttle body a manual version. We converted it, just cut all the electronics off. And sometimes I just put vice grips on there and use that. Um, sometimes we weld a little pin on there. And that way we can basically make it a manual throttle body. It had 30 pound injectors. We're using a Holly HP as we normally do. And then the zero electric water pump. <clears throat> this one had, <clears throat> excuse me, had a little bit of a comp cam in it. Pretty healthy as one of their newer grinds. It was a 596, 582 lift, 220, 230 at 50 and 113 degree load separation angle. And what we did was run it with stock exhaust manifolds and then two different style headers. So we run it with two different, basically primary diameter. Although the, the design of the headers were different too. I think they may have even been for different applications. I don't think either one of these headers were actually truck headers. Um, I think that they might've been for uh, 300s or challengers or chargers or something, but they were just headers that we happened to have at the time. So I there, and since they both fit for what we were doing on the dyno, it makes for an easy test. And then we just put collector extensions after the, after the mufflers, I mean, after the headers. And then uh, we did not run mufflers on these. On the stock exhaust manifolds, we ran two and a half inch pipe, which is bigger than the exit of the opening of the stock exhaust manifold, and then just run, do a 90 degree bend or even a 45 degree bend and run a length of two and a half inch tubing out directed basically toward the exit of the dyno where, where the extraction fan is to draw all the exhaust out. And <clears throat> we didn't run uh, cats or, or mufflers or any of that stuff. That may affect the test only in that those things are going to be potentially more restrictive, certainly with the cats on there. With the mufflers, probably not at this power level. I mean, this thing wasn't making a ton of power, but we did run it with stock exhaust manifolds. And again, there's there's always this common misconception that, oh, the, yeah, the low speed power, that's where stock exhaust manifolds are good. They're not. <laughs> the long tube headers are better. And this is a this is a drastic case because Different exhaust manifolds for different engine applications work differently. Like the stock RAM uh, exhaust manifolds are terrible. And by that, I mean, they're very, very restrictive. They're just a log. They're, they're designed to be easy to put on and to fit. And, and, but they're not, they're not good. <laughs> the SRT8 manifolds, the performance manifolds are much better and they're definitely worth power. They're worth power kind of in between a, a good set of headers and the, and the stock RAM manifolds, they would be, think of them as like a mid-length kind of header. And those actually work fairly well. And they work well given that they're factory, you know, that they're stock exhaust manifolds. Though. So they, they, those actually perform pretty well. So all stock exhaust manifolds are not the same. Some for different engine families and groups and, and for different um, chassis setups obviously are different, but, but they all work. And But they do not produce low speed torque the way that a long tube header does. And this is a perfect example. So we ran, we ran this thing first. We ran, it was a 5.7 with that camshaft, kind of a cammed hemi. 
and with that 220 cam from comp and run with the stock exhaust manifolds and tuned to that HP management system. It made 407 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 418 foot pounds at 4,400. <clears throat> the fact that it made more torque than horsepower kind of tells you that this was, I, I'm surprised that it did that actually with, um, with a 220 cam in it, but it's still fairly mild. So then we put the inch and five eighths headers on there. And so I'm gonna have a poll here. Okay, who thinks that inch and five eighths headers, long tube headers, make more low speed torque than inch and seven eighths headers? So, so do you think that the smaller primary diameter, the smaller inch and five eighths headers are gonna make more low speed power than the inch and seven eighths headers? Let me, let me know what you guys think. That'll, that'll be our poll for today. Would you pick the smaller ones for more, more low speed torque? So as I said, we ran this thing with the stock exhaust manifolds, 407 horsepower and 418 foot-pounds of torque. Then we installed larger headers. We put a set of inch and five eighths long tube headers on it, and then three inch exhaust out, just collector extensions out the back. And that picked up power quite a bit. So that picked up uh, horsepower from 407 horsepower with the stock exhaust manifolds to 434 horsepower. So a big jump in power from the headers. And torque went up from 418 foot-pounds to 439 foot-pounds. And owing to the scavenging effect of headers, that this is not a, a flow thing that a lot of guys think of, this thing made peak power at basically the same RPM. I mean, it changed by 100 RPM. But when you look at the numbers there, we might have a, <laughs> you know, we, we had 434 horsepower or 434.4 horsepower at 6,100 RPM. At 6,000 RPM, we might have had 434.2 or 3. So it might not, not even be one full horsepower difference. So essentially, it's making the same power at, at the same kind of RPM. Same, same uh, peak power RPMs as the stock exhaust manifolds and same peak torque, all within 100, uh, 100 RPM of each other. So basically, the header just made the thing better everywhere. I mean, it was up you know, it, with the with a long tube header compared to the stock exhaust manifold, it was up, you know, 35 horsepower and 30 foot pounds of torque. So that tells you how restrictive stock exhaust manifolds are on a, a Dodge Ram, on a, on a Hemi, it's on a 5.7. So uh, headers would be, for me, uh, unlike the LS stuff, headers would be a, definitely a good upgrade on a, on a Dodge truck that they Every time I've tested headers on a 5.7 Hemi, especially versus the stock RAM manifolds, it makes a lot more power. They're, they're much, much better. So then we put inch and seven eighths headers on it. So <laughs> inch and seven eighths headers. So what do you think happened? Do you think that it made more peak power? Do you think it made more, more mid-range power? Do you think it made more low speed power? We'll, we'll start it off so people can keep answering the poll. But I can tell you that between the inch and five eighths headers and the inch and seven eighths headers, they made exactly the same power from 4,000 RPM to 5,300 RPM. The curve was an exact overlay. I mean, you know, within a percentage of one horsepower. So they were basically exactly the same in that range. They were different above that and they were different below that. So the inch and seven eighths headers, so, so for people that are answering the poll, did better everywhere. <laughs> it made more low speed power by seven or eight foot pounds of torque. So it made 441 horsepower and 438.9 uh, foot pounds of torque. So it was within, <laughs> well, again, five or six tenths of a, of a foot pound, basically the same torque as the, as the inch and five eighths. Cause like I said, they, they were just there where they made peak torque, but down low, it was worth seven or eight foot pounds of torque um, down below 4,000 RPM above that it was, or, or down below it was worth as much as 10 foot pounds above that it was worth seven or eight horsepower. 
So they were the same in the middle, but the larger headers were better above that and below that. It's a common misconception that the bigger headers are going to lose power down low, but that's not what happened. And, and this is exactly why we test. And, uh, and, and this is not an unusual situation either. I've done testing with uh, inch and seven eighths headers and inch and three quarter headers on LS motors. And we see, we often see down very low that the bigger headers make more low speed power, which is kind of counterintuitive, but that's why we test stuff. So, because the, the dyno will tell us, hey, look, this is what happened. And, and you can just go, okay, now it's my job to figure out why is it doing that when that's not what I think should happen. But of the two of us, one of us is right, and it's and it's not me. It's definitely the dyno telling us what's going on. So bigger headers on the Hemi inch and seven eighths were basically better everywhere. So if I was if I was doing a, upgrading a Dodge Ram and I was putting headers on it, I would put inch and seven eighths headers on it. I didn't test an inch and three quarter set because we didn't have those. And then obviously other things would come into play. Certainly the and I don't have the measurements here but certainly primary length would have an effect on, on where these things make power. But again, even if we were juggling primary length, the larger primary tube diameter was better everywhere. So maybe it was longer, maybe it was shorter. You know, we, we could, we could take a look at that, but, and also, you know, there's some, some power to be had from the collector design. Does it, does it have a merge collector? You know, what is the exhaust length? after the headers was exactly the same on both of them. So that didn't come into play because that was that was a fixed variable. But big gains from headers on the Dodge Ram compared to stock exhaust manifolds, whether you pick the inch and five eighths or the inch and seven eighths, you just get a little bit more with the inch and seven eighths and you get a little bit more on both ends. You get it at the bottom and at the top. So, you know, good scavenging effect as we have come to expect from headers, not just a flow thing, and the more power down low shows you what's going on. It shows you that there are some fairly cool uh, pressure waves and scavenging waves that come in and help extract the exhaust out and draw the air intake in. That's why we're getting more torque there. It's not that, hey, look, it just flows better. Because if it flowed better, we just take the headers off and just have it flow to atmosphere because then it would flow better, right? Probably not actually, but um, you, you get the idea. So definitely headers on a Hemi. Um, if you're gonna do an upgrade, that's good. Camshafts on Hemis, just like LSs, camshafts, very good. Those would be the two things. Obviously, both of these are gonna require optimized tune, but camshafts go a long way because Hemis, like the LS motors, have really good cylinder heads and they have really good intake manifolds. The truck intake manifold on the 5.7 Hemi is very good. The the Magnum Hemi, the <laughs> the Magnum intake manifold, the car intake manifold, that works really good. In fact, that, that one's probably my favorite of the stock ones. The SRT8 manifold also does good. It loses power down low and makes more power up top, just like we would expect from a more performance oriented version. But all those are good. So what it needs, like an LS, because it has a good intake and has good cylinder heads, is it just needs a camshaft and that works very well. But if you're looking at a RAM instead of an SRT8, then headers are, are would definitely be a must because otherwise you're not going to make the power that you could. And, you know, who, who doesn't want 35 horsepower and 30 foot pounds of torque? <laughs> That's a pretty good game from headers. Let's see what you guys got going on. I reclaimed wood, open baffle speakers and sounding good. That's good. You know, nothing about Hemi's. Well, now you do. Now you know everything that there is to know about Hemi's. Bigger tubes aren't necessarily better because higher velocity the collector can be good for scavenging. <clears throat> yeah, but the pressure waves are not are are not from exhaust velocity. Uh, good morning. Velocity is good for scavenging. Yeah, it's not. It's not the speed of the exhaust flowing out um, that creates two of the primary pressure waves. So it's not just that. I was told that as recent as two years ago, inch and five eighths make more low and torque. <laughs> they didn't on this test. Do larger primary diameters slow down the negative pressure waves or is it always at constant speed? The, the pressure waves travel at the speed of sound. So the, the reflected waves um, travel the same speed. The thing that would change the speed would be temperature. The... Um, 
like on the intake, the inertial ram um, is affected by primary diameter. Hello, I have a question that if a 5.4 liter engine has V8 twin turbo 30 PSI pressure, how much horsepower will they have? How much fuel will they consume? Uh, the, the amount of power produced at 30 pounds of boost will, de be, will depend on the amount of power that you start with. But 30 pounds of boost will basically, if you have 300 horsepower, you would have nine. If you have a 300 horsepower NA motor, you'd have 900. So basically it triples, 30 pounds would triple the amount of power that you have. Whatever that is. Because that's basically... I mean, technically it's 29.7 or something, 29.4. Um, so a little more than that, but basically what you have are two atmospheres. So at one atmosphere is the NA and then two more, that's three. How's our pole doing? Who thinks the engine five eight headers make more low speed torque than engine seven eights? 77% are saying no. Do stock like push rods work okay with a sloppy stage two cam? I don't know. I don't know what the base circle of the sloppy stage two cam is. Um, I, I always measure it while I'm installing it. You install it, get the get it at zero lash, and then and then count the number of turns it takes to bolt down the rocker to the rocker stand, and it's less than a turn and a half. You're okay. Then you are all good. I need to do some more Hemi testing. I'm gonna go right to go right to live chat. I'm surprised there's not very many people here this morning. I'm, that's unusual. Maybe because I'm talking about Hemis. Where's all the Hemi love, man? My Hemi Dakota is running. Oh, that's cool. I need a solution for the PCM controlled alternator without spending 600 for the Holly alternator. It's a Ram 5.7. Does anybody have any help for Jim on the on the alternator? Why? What? What is the computer controlling on the alternator? Is it? Is it? Is it a? Um, is it load sensing or something? And is and it's a, it's turning the alternator on and off. Are smaller header primaries better than bigger ones in literally any situation? Uh, yes, they, I'm, I'm sure that they can be, I'm sure you could get too big and, and we'd have to see where that is on, on particular applications. Bob, so you had a four, seven, did you have the, was that the high output four, seven that people want me to test? Jim, what did that Dakota originally come with? Was it a was it a V6 to begin with? And is it a Shelby version? <laughs> didn't they, didn't Shelby make a convertible version of that? I think my friend had one of those. I think that that's what he had. Pretty sporty. He also had a um, a Starsky and Hutch Torino, which was very cool. It was a V6, okay. Probably going to run a lot better with a Hemi than I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, Enduro, I already answered your question on the sloppy stage too. And and because we're doing live feed, the it's question and answer time now after after I've already done my information on the Hemi header test. Um, you can ask whatever questions you want. Half HO and not, <laughs> not HO. The HO was good. Wanted to do the 08 intake upgrade, but never got there. I don't know enough about those motors to know which one, to, to know that the intakes are different or any of that. Tuning headers is tough. The scavenging effect needs to be tuned to the overlap of the cam. Change the headers and you like to need to change the cam as well to maximize the header effect. Well, the 
the header will still work with a bunch of different cams. What you're doing with the cam timing is initiating the, you're initiating the, the reflected wave. But because a header, a tune length header works in a broad range, um, it can still be very effective. There's not one specific RPM that cam timing or header length is tuned to. It's, it's tuned for a, for a fairly broad RPM range. Like I said, when on the engine five eights and engine seven eights, there was a almost 1500 RPM where they were exactly the same. And I've seen that on LS motors too, when we've done engine three quarter and engine seven eights headers where they were, they were exactly the same. Striped tomato, hack, hack the alternator, run an external regulator. If you don't want to use a PCM control, either that or run an alternator from an older five seven. It has a GeForce T5 and Explorer rear was 373s. Oh, cool. Did it did it originally have a oh the Explorer? Is the Explorer the IRS? I'm here. I had company last night. Good. Todd's in the house. Uh, oh, the 08 and up design apparently raised them to 300 horsepower. Injector upgrade is all I got into that engine with a slight tune before it was stolen. That's a bummer. I didn't realize the four sevens were rated that high that they made that much power. How important is header collector size? You can adjust power with collector size. My 383 LT4 going into my 97Z28 will have stainless works headers. They do a good job. But the collector diameter is two and a half instead of three. Well, here's something to think about. Um, sometimes merge collectors neck down and then come back up. And, and that has an effect on power. I don't have a universal statement for you on how that works. In fact, it's not going to work the same on every application, but here's something else to consider. If you have a three inch collector and then you have a, a neck down to two and a half inch exhaust, does the, and if you just had a, if you just had a two and a half inch collector, would that make any change? Again, I, I would have to test it to find out to see if there was any change. And we've done that before where we've run three inch headers into two and a half inch exhaust. And then I ran three inch into three inch exhaust and we ran, but the test was a full exhaust versus just basically a 40 or so inch length of pipe and then Magnaflow free flowing mufflers. And those headers and mufflers made more power than the, than the complete cat two and a half inch cat back exhaust did as I would expect. But we have length of tubing, we have a smaller diameter and we have different mufflers, all which could affect flow, but it was only about 10 horsepower. So 10 or 12 horsepower is not a whole bunch. On the pole, as long as some other factor is making no difference in scavenging, more flow should always be better than less. Uh, no, that's not the case because the, the flow rate of the, or the power gain from a header is not from flow not entirely from flow. Vern, I asked about ring gap 2625, but in that universal, I'm using the piston rings, plasma mauling for, yeah, that's, that's, that's enough to run boost on. Pretty much all the PowerMaster alternators are set to run as a one wire, so no PCM needed. They have some affordable ones. Maybe see how to do it and copy the internal wiring. I bank O2s and a single downstream. I'm replacing Y pipe and doing a turbo. A new turbo's only got single upstream. Doesn't matter how close the manifold the O2s are and downstream pre post turbo. I, I run the O2 sensors after the turbo.
0847s got up there in power. Apparently, it was all just in the intake design. Cool. So they didn't change the cam timing or compression or anything. I don't. I don't know what the difference is in power between the different year 47s. I'll have to do a little. I'll have to go down the rabbit hole a little bit on that and find out. Sean, question for my friend who has a Camaro SS1LE. He already has intake and flex fuel. His goal is 500 wheel horsepower. What heads cam get him there with a mild enough cam not to impact drivability? He wants to make 500 horsepower at 500 wheel horsepower from a 5.7. He's not going to get there. I spent big money on the T304 stainless steel headers because I live in the Northeast and right near the ocean. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Sean, it's hard to make 600 flywheel horsepower with a 5.7 and it takes a big cam to do it. What do you think the result would be if headers were abnormally large on a two inch? N not, not very much. And if any of my testing in the past has shown, we ran um, inch and three quarter, inch and seven eighths and two inch headers on a it was either a 5.4 or a 5.8 modular Ford, and I did it NA, and then we did it after we put the we put a Kenny Bell blower on there, and the two inch didn't really lose power, so it did, they all did really well. Oh, oh, a 6.2 LT1. Okay, that's different. Yeah, <laughs> that's definitely possible. Yeah, to have him take a look at the the. Dyna results that Brian Tooley has up on their on their 6.2 stuff. Uh, that that might be doable with just a cam. Yeah, I was going to say uh, <laughs> that's a, a 5.7 LS1 or even an LS6, starting with an LS6. Getting there, getting to 600 at the flywheel is with even if with a 5.7 is that takes a lot, but but a 6.2 LT1 is not that hard, it's already doing really well. Yeah, they made um, with their LT1, they made 770 or 780, I think, at the flywheel. Um, that was with a lot of stuff, but, um, and, and they, but the, it was a stock bottom end. All they did was notch the pistons, I think for more piston to valve clearance. And then now the guys from, um, I think the guys from GPI are way above that. I think that they're in the eight hundreds in the, in like the mid eight hundreds or something. <laughs> no, no, not a C4. Not, not a not a tune part motor, but also not a, just an LS1 either. I mean, either one of those. I mean, this the the tune port motor would be a far cry from a, even an LT1, but a tune port motor like an L98 would be miles away from that. And an LT1 would also be pretty far away from that. An LS1 also pretty far away from that. But the, but the newer LT62 that's that's pretty good. Run it on E85. And it's all happy. Who thinks that inch and five eighths headers make more low speed torque than inch and seven eighths headers? Look at that, seventy five percent saying no. I'm very surprised at that. Speaking of LS and LT engines, does lightweight valves affect power output or just the valve train longevity? That's really more to help cure um, valve float. I've never seen, and I've never done one, but I've never seen a back-to-back -back test on valve weight to see if there was a change in power. It wouldn't surprise me if there was. We'd have to look at, um, you know, you have to look at two things. One, I know, because I've done with spring rates and spring rate will affect power. If you increase the spring rate, you can decrease the power a little bit. It's not, it's not a lot, but it's some. Valves might do the same thing if you had a significant change in valve weight. Like if you had um, heavy solid stainless valves versus titanium valves, maybe you could see some power there just from the weight. The other thing to think about is if you're having, did you change um, valve loft or bounce because of the, you know, are you getting into valve instability because of the valve weight? 
if you cure that, that's a whole separate thing where you could be getting power gains from that. Again, the, the Spintron would be the best place to, you know, you could see it if you saw it on the dyno and then you put it on the Spintron, you're like, oh yeah, it's that, that the bounce went away or the loft went away. I'm running a Y pipe to a single turbo remote in the bed. We'll have no muffler or cats. So if I put the bank O2 in the factory location and downstream after the turbo should be, yeah, it, it's going to read the air fuel. So that's fine. A lot of guys are concerned about putting it far enough away. I'm just take, taking a look at my, uh, Bruno who's under the desk here, putting it far away from the turbo that it doesn't, you know, hurt it from heat, especially if you're running sustained boost like silver state picked up the parts from racing 383 guy claimed 600 horsepower heads were 202 valve cam 63 lift intake was rated at four to eight supposedly an 850 carb and sell the carb uh is it a a 383 small block chevy and i need to know what head that what heads they are would tell me a lot um you can make it out of a, uh probably could do that out of a 202 valve most good small block Chevy heads that are going to be flowing 300 or more would have a bigger valve than that. They'd have a 205 or a 208 valve. Real question should be, if you had a real three inch dual exhaust with a crossover, would it be any slower than headers? I don't know what you're comparing there. This had a real dual exhaust on it. So the, are you, you're thinking that the exhaust is going to lessen the power output? It's gonna lessen it on both cases and, and putting headers on even with a complete exhaust on it is still gonna show really big power gains. And so are you, is your question about the exhaust changing the effect of the engine five eighths versus engine seven eighths? 33 brown brownfields are that's that goes a while back are they heavily ported and stuff you have to flow them and see where they flow i mean they're gonna have to flow more than 300 cfm to support that power level and we've seen ported aluminum you know they'd have to be pretty big small but chevy heads they have to be 220 plus cc's i'm sure Open headers don't do as well with no collector extension on them. They lose a bunch of low-speed power. Uh, Sean, a 220 cam is going to, it's not going to be as drivable as stock. Um, Bob, yeah, you just want to, on the, on the mass air meter, you want to not have it too close because you just don't want it back feeding or altering the signal to the mass air meter. We need to get a regular car review to review a car with brownfield heads with a, with a brownfield engine. What's a brownfield engine? Is it just an engine that has brownfield heads? Man, I haven't seen a set of brownfield heads in a long time. Who thinks that engine 5 8 headers make more low speed torque than engine 7 8s? About three quarters saying, nah. Three, three brownfields, two or two, 200 cc runners. Yeah, I don't think that's going to, I think you'd be really hard pressed to get, <laughs> to get to 600, 500 is your, probably more accurate. I think the, um, the airflow research uh, heads that West Tech has on their 372 are 195s, but they're good 195s. Um, they're probably the eliminator heads, like the comp ported ones. And they're in the low to mid 500s with that motor with a with a really good single plane intake manifold and a big carburetor and a, and a 248, 250 kind of cam.
So you, you need a lot of stuff to get to 600. Um, I've done 600 horsepower 383 LS motors. I don't think I've ever done one. I've never done a, I've never done a 383. Who's that? Go get him. Okay, go, go, go get him. I've never done a 383 small block at that power level. Most of them are in the low to mid 500s on the 383 small blocks. Not, not because we couldn't, but I just have never stuck that much camshaft in them. What are, uh, any idea on the 4.3 Vortec injector limits? Still spider injection currently. Somebody was telling me that they had a bunch of experience with that, of, of putting new injectors in those or making those bigger, or making them flow more. I have no experience on those. I own an 88 IROC Z28, my first ever project. If I LS swap it with force induction, do I have to upgrade the 700 transmission? Yes, most definitely. Yeah, making the power is easy. Getting the transmission to be strong enough to work with the new power is, is an expensive thing. Three years ago, we paint the collector with cheap paint, make a run and cut it where the paint burned. It was 15 to 18 inches. You, you would cut it, just have a collector extension? A lot of guys did that and that's where they put their crossover. Um, I'd like to see if that actually works. Uh, and see what happens if we change the position of the crossover. But I can tell you that 18 inches is is less collector extension than you need. You you will get more low speed power from more collector extension because I've run a like 18 or 20 inch one, and then we've run a 40 inch one, and the 40 inch one picked up more more low speed power. And interestingly enough, they don't they have very little effect on power at the top. But the interesting thing is guys that are running open headers, if you're doing that at the drag strip, most people are not running those at, you know, except whatever your stall speed is on, if you're drag racing, usually is higher than the area that we would be concerned about for getting low speed power. But it would help your, it would help with your, it would help spool your converter. But if you've got a 5,000 RPM stall converter, none of that matters. <laughs> you're, you're never down low. There's a multi-injector upgrade from the Marine stuff. I've seen the Marine stuff. This, this was specifically about upgrading the existing spider stuff, not, not changing the injectors. I'm running a solid 500 horsepower 350 on the Dynasty. That'll be cool. Seventy-six twenty-four. I like the S10s. I wish I had a little mini truck. Kind of the Dodge Rampage is the one that I want the most, but I, I just don't want 40 year old or 50 year old wiring in it. Yeah. Sean, what do you have a stock cam in your ZL1 right now? Because that motor would wake up from a from a different camshaft. It's nice having traction, yep. I'm sure that car has traction control, right? There's a mid-engine Hemi Rampage at last year's Holly Mo party. Yeah, that's um, oh, what the heck's the guy's name? 
The one that's in the bed. Um, I'll think of his name in a minute. You could join the TDI Jetta with a trailer or some other regular car instead of mini trucking it. Yeah, the truck is better though, because then the dogs can get in the back. I, I like the idea of a truck. Um, the Eric from West Tech has had a bunch of those um, TDI motors, and those are he still does, and those are those are cool because we'd always talk about the fuel mileage stuff. I like the I like the diesel stuff because obviously the mileage is really good, and also because you can modify it and, and make it more powerful, which is kind of cool. Because I I had the VX and then the Sprint Turbo before that. The Turbo was was a lot of fun because it was a turbo, but it would also get really good mileage. I don't want to ruin that car. Sean, I, I agree. There's something to be said. That's why my truck is stock. Were you successful in boring your 5.3 block 30 over? I forgot if it's an iron or aluminum. I have several of those. You can bore a 5.3 a lot more, an iron 5.3 a lot more than 30 over. An iron 5.3, you can bore to 3.905 from 3.780. So you can bore that one a lot. That's how we make 383s out of them. We go to 3900 or 3902 or 3905, which are common piston sizes. And then you put a four inch stroke crank in it. The aluminum blocks, the aluminum 5.3 blocks can be bored also. The Jetta truck conversion. I, I like the VW trucks too. Those are good also. Uh, Copeland is the guy that's Mike Copeland, I think is the guy that owns that, um, that truck bed mounted Hemi. It's pretty cool. It's been at SEMA a bunch. Still 75%. The, the, the Ram manifolds were not good. I did it with the IR manifold. In fact, I think I ran that when I, when we ran the IR manifold on the Hemi, the Speedmaster stuff, which did well, made obviously a good bit more power. Um, the the one manifold that does on the Hemi stuff, the intake manifold that does fairly well is the Mopar Performance one. It does very well at the top, but it's way down power down low. Um, I, I think that there probably are better single plane manifolds. And I've got some Hemi videos up where we tested the the um, Mopar Performance, the big single plane that they're using on their their whatever their version of the Copo cars are um, on their drag race versions. We we tested that, but we're we're testing it on motors that are you know don't really qualify to use that kind of manifold. But I was just curious to see what they would do because one I think I think it was Doug Glad, one of the editors had that. It's a shame there's nothing on the new on the new market to match old mini trucks and. Yeah, I and the the thing I was looking around, I did I did a deep dive into mini trucks to see if um, getting a mini truck was going to improve the fuel mileage dramatically. And none of them actually get very good mileage. None none of them are anywhere near what a, a you know a Civic is or a VW Rabbit or any of those. I didn't look at the diesel Rabbit truck, although those are hard to find. I thought you could go 20 over on 48 and 53 LS blocks. No, that's incorrect. You can go a lot. Like I said, from 3780 to 3900. Um, making the iron 48 and 53 blocks, taking them out to the to the 57 bore is very very common done all the time. In fact, I just took a 48 block and right now they're boring it to 4 inches which is going to leave it probably thin, but we're going to have um, a sonic test before and after to see how thin the block is. But I'm going to put six liter stuff in it. I'm going to make a six liter out of a 4853 block. S10 of the stock 48. Doesn't work. 
I thought that we could put a 4A in the dots and Z that I have and, and get something that got 30 or 35 miles per gallon. I would think that would be pretty easy. But I'd like to, I, I think a, in the rampage, I think if we had a 2.2 or a 2.5 that was the higher compression of the NA motor, but I would want it to be a turbo and a low boost turbo thing, I think that that thing would get good fuel mileage on the freeway. So a diesel rabbit truck, the thing was leaking fuel. <laughs> Those are good. They, the diesel rabbits last forever and so do the truck versions. The V8 swap S10 gets better mileage than the V6. I, I, people say that, but I don't know how that that would be possible. All right, Ralph, man, we'll see you later. Still 74%. 74. When someone has too much cylinder head for an NA application, but then, then boost it, does it take advantage of the head flow? The, the turbo just, just multiplies what's there, whatever the NA power is. So like on an LS3, which has more cylinder head flow than you need, if you run boost on it, it doesn't all of a sudden make a whole bunch more power because you've added boost to it. it. It adds the percentage amount of power that you have. There are some applications like import applications I've seen where we do better than the formula and you might attribute that to them having excessive head flow, I guess. But I would want to test that before I made that blanket statement. Because even if you have a head that's good enough and not overly good and it makes that power and then you boost it, you're going to increase that flow rate of the head dramatically with pressure. So just like with throttle bodies, okay, if the throttle body is restrictive at 600 horsepower, when you add boost to it, it's not restrictive anymore. <laughs> it's, it has plenty of flow. And also the head flow is not always the thing that stops the head from making power. I'd like to see a test of the Melling Shark tooth oil pump. What is the, I, I'm not familiar with that. Did they change the gear pitch or something? You know, every stock V8 swap I've done that's gained mileage in S10s just doesn't work as hard, less weight. So is the why would the why would an iron block 48 weigh less than an iron block V6? Is it because the V6 had iron heads or something? I'd like to see what the weight is, but the gearing could have a, a lot to do with that. Gets better gas mileage because the engine is under stress. That's but that's not how that's not how fuel mileage works. Fuel mileage works by the vehicle requires a certain amount of power to maintain a certain speed on a flat level ground. The, the amount of power that's required requires a certain amount of fuel. So under cruise conditions, both of those, both those motors can provide that amount of power and fuel. Now, what else happens? Because and the and the amount of power required to do that is is rolling resistance, aerodynamics, vehicle weight, and and we'll assume no grade or anything that for the for the example. Um, but now, which one of those can do it more efficiently? And actually, this thing about the motor being under stress is the reverse of what you want for fuel mileage. In that, you actually want more throttle angle to get better fuel mileage because the more throttle angle has less vacuum and that's less of a pumping loss. So that's why in, in a lot of these situations where they run variable cam timing and the BMW and it had uh, like electronically controlled valve timing, um, 
and, and why diesels get get good mileage too is because they have no throttle. They have no, no vacuum between the like a throttle body and the rest of the motor. They don't have those pumping losses. So does a V8 have more frictional loss than a V6? You know, the, the weight, the gearing, all, obviously all of those things that would come into play too. How much gain do you get on a 5.3 by adding half a point of compression? The rule of thumb is three to four percent per one full point, so half of that. Better head flow is better fuel mileage. I don't know that that necessarily goes together. Probably trans swap makes the most sense in my case. Each of those trucks went from a stick to an automatic, so it was a stick and it went to an automatic. With a stick, it should get better mileage than an automatic. Um, you know, maybe if there's a lockup converter and maybe if the gearing and the transmission itself, like the overdriven gear was different, that could affect it. But usually a, a manual transmission gets better than an automatic. Chevy made some S10s with a bigger motor. Did they ever put, I don't think the factory ever put V8s in, right? I know that they put 4.3 liter V6s in them. Do you think a dual plenum intake is better than a dual plane intake manifold? It's definitely different, but you have to be specific about which ones of those you're talking about. So we've gone down a little bit, 64%. So the yeses have gone up on the smaller header. Got some new people that have come in. They didn't hear the discussion at the beginning. The interesting thing on the dual plane is that when I've tested dual planes, particularly I, th I think on stock 4.8s and 5.3s, the dual plane makes more low speed power than the, um, than the truck manifold does, like way, like way down low, as long as we could get the fuel metered properly with a carburetor and it's easier to do the stock camshaft. But it does make more low speed power. Then, it, then in the middle part, it goes away um, and then the truck manifold does better at the top too, but way down low, the dual plane has always actually performed pretty well. Only SLP Colorado's got V8s. Oh, okay. Maybe I, I, and I'm not even familiar with those. I didn't even know SLP, SLP did those. Best to compare four cylinder, five cylinder, and eight cylinder Colorados. Did they ever make eight cylinder Colorados? They made six cylinder Colorados for gas mileage. I'm sure that the rated fuel mileage of the bigger engine is going to be less than it is in the smaller engine because they don't they don't have enough as much um, losses driving um, more cylinders. Huh? There's more friction. Huh, oh, doggies? Huh? Oh. You don't have to keep coming and forcing me to pay you. It's not like you get, <laughs> it's not like you get, not like you are, you're not starved for affection, are you? Okay. Okay. Could be better technology and airflow that went into the LS and helped them be more efficient in the S10s and the 4.3s. Yeah, you could have a better um, brake specific fuel consumption number. Maybe they're maybe they run them leaner. What you got on your head here? Okay, you're okay. These two dogs, this one, this one right here. here put your nose up here so you can see. Oh, see his nose. <laughs> the two puppies are a year old. Um, the we have another one, Milo, who is thirteen. Hello. What's he doing? Do you want to come up and say hi? We'll jump up here. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. Get up here. You get up here. Come on. There we go. <laughs> oh, here comes your brother, huh? You gonna come up too? Come here, Brady. Come here. Come here, huh? What are you doing? What are you doing, huh? What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you doing? Brady, you gonna come up? You gonna come and say hi? Come on. Get up here. There you go. There's Brady. <laughs> yep. 
swap, if your swap VA draws air from under the hood, then the air is hotter and less dense than the factory, which usually draws cold air from the fender. And actually drawing hot air is better for fuel mileage than cold air is. <laughs> yeah, they're they're very photogenic. Did you did you you just did the army man crawl under there too, didn't you, man? I want to build an S10 with a twin turbo 3800. That'd be good. You could just take the 3800 and the transmission from the um, from the Camaros or Firebirds, the rear wheel drive stuff, and then away you go. And then you top swap it. Just put the L67 stuff on there. Put the blower on there. Oh, if you're going to do turbos, you could just use that motor. <laughs> you don't even have to do the L67 stuff. Okay, we're going to close out our poll, 64%. That's good. We've got two more minutes. In 2007, the 4348 and 5.3 all got the same. They were all rated at the same fuel mileage? That seems odd. That's what the EPA's website is saying. Okay, cool. Uh, I will be back tonight. Right now I'm going to go work on the um, 4.8 liter part two of the video that I did yesterday. So we're going to have boost on that because, you know, as we know, everything is better with boost. And so I'll get going on that, but I'll see you guys all tonight.